Hey everybody, hope today is treating you well. Um, we're going to try something a little bit different and uh, we have been talking a lot about um, training in general and things like that so I want to mix it up and today I want to talk a little bit about biomechanics. i um, not going to get too hardcore because I'm going to keep this just a couple minutes um, but having fit ah, thousands and thousands of runners for running shoes over my um, days when I own my run shop um, there was always two terms, more so one term, that people I think were intrigued with <clears throat> but never quite understood. So let's see if I can't um, include you in that list of people. Uh, so there's, when it comes to biomechanics, there's two terms people have probably heard. There's pronation and there's supination. And think of pronation as shock absorption. It's how your body absorbs shock. Um, or, or your foot, I should say, and think of supination as the propulsion. So you need those two motions in order to essentially run or walk or whatever you do. So just imagine your foot is about to hit the ground. So both feet are in the air and you're about to land on that one foot. Before you have any weight on your foot, your foot is actually 26 loose bones. So when you sit down on the couch or bed or anything and you and there's no weight on your on your foot, you can move all of those bones. Some may feel a bit harder to move than others, but essentially there's 26 bones that make up the foot. And the unique thing about that is when you're about to land on the ground, what's going to happen is all those bones are going to spread out. They're going to allow more surface area of your foot to basically absorb the impact and spread that shock, if you will, or less stress because you're using more surface area of your foot. That's what's called pronation. And most people, about 70% of people, pronate just enough. And what I mean by that is as you land into like your midfoot, your arch will collapse just enough, um, not too much to the point where the arch is all the way on the ground, but just enough so there's a little bit of arch, hence the word arch. And that is essentially pronation. So you've landed, you've absorbed impact. So once you absorb that impact, the next thing is you want to move forward, right? You don't want to just stop. And that's where supination comes in. So essentially now, as the heel bone starts to lift up a little bit, all those 26 bones in theory or in essence essentially become one bone. They all become locked up and that's what allows you to propel forward. So pronation again, think of that as shock, shock absorption. Um, and as far as biomechanics go, probably 70% of people roughly have uh, what's called like neutral biomechanics. They pronate just enough to absorb shock, but not so much that it causes knee pain and shin pain and everything else. And then they supinate. 5% of people are true supinators. A lot of people want to think that they're supinators and they need, quote, cushioned shoes. That's, that's false. Very few people, so one out of every 20, truly supinate. What I mean by that is when they land on that heel, they don't pronate, they don't roll in. So their body doesn't absorb shock very well. So that's actually not a good thing. It's, a, it's a efficient from a mechanic standpoint, but it's not healthy in the sense that your body can't naturally absorb shock. And then about one in four or 25% of people over pronate. And that's where they, their, their arch essentially is, is too low. And rather than, you know, once they absorb shock, when they should switch to that supination mode, if you will, the foot's still kind of collapsing a little bit, and it causes that arch to roll in. And that rolling in of that arch actually causes an entire rotation throughout your leg, which can lead to anything from plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, posterior tibial tendonitis, anterior tibial tendonitis, knee pain, IT band pain, a lot of different things. Um, so essentially... Your, your footwear needs to work together with your own natural biomechanics and together create a natural, healthy gait cycle. So in four minutes, hopefully I gave you a little sense of understanding of pronation and supination. And that is it for today. As always, I uh, really enjoy chatting with you. And we will talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.